Glory, glory. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. How is y'all's people doing? How is Israel? Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Give him some praise, saints. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Worthy, worthy. Now he allowed you to see. Glory to the King. Well, he allowed you to see yet another day, saints of the Most High, y'all. Hallelujah. So we have much to be thankful for. Another opportunity to get things right. Another opportunity to repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to be assembled with the saints, whether here or scattered abroad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all in one spirit. Hallelujah. So let us pray, saints. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ, we come before you, Yahweh, saying thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. I pray, Father, for strength right now. I pray that the word will go forth to strengthen the hearts and the minds of your people, Father Yah. In the name of Jesus, I say thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Pray that there's no hindrance, no, no interference with this message, no interference with the broadcast, with, with the feed, or nothing like that. In the name of Jesus, Father, bless you and praise you and thank you. Hallelujah. You may be seated, saints. Hallelujah. As, as you can see, uh, saints, pastors, out and... Uh, Doing the work, hallelujah, and um, I'm here before you, hallelujah. I don't take it as a small thing, hallelujah, but uh, I give you all the praise and the glory, hallelujah. But I'm going to talk to you today, just going to look at a few things and uh, just the behavior, mannerisms, and traits um, that, you know, even some of us now that we possess, you know, our ancients displayed this a lot, got them into a lot of trouble, hallelujah, and uh, the thing of it all is that we want to just look back at the past so that we don't make the same mistakes going forward. Hallelujah. And the thing that we're pushing forward to in this hour is establishing that fear in our hearts, you know, for Yahweh, uh, holding him up with high esteem and, and his commandments and just being people of obedience. You know, you know, it's time out for all the, the, the plan. It's time out for making the same mistakes over and over and over. Hallelujah. So it's time to go higher in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But the. The one thing uh, we can't say is that we're lacking anything here in this uh, ministry. And I don't know if y'all uh, remember or not, but I'm sure y'all do. This past Shabbat evening, uh, Pastor got on a radio broadcast and just went all out and, and spoke truth to all of us. You know what I mean? And it's something that we need to consider, you know, if it hits you directly or not. How did that make you feel? What did that do to your spirit? You know, and these are the things we need to focus on. Did you just pass it off as just pastor going off on another rant or did you really take consideration of it or you know did it upset you or offend you you know these things you got to really uh, deal with yourself and then Shabbat service the message that he brought forward you know Yah is really trying to get his people you know to be serious minded and to realize the the, the actions and, the, and the, the things that we do how they affect him you know what I mean so but well, we're going to look at just that behavior, that, that stiff neck, hallelujah, that uh, hard and cruel, um, rebellious type spirit, hallelujah, that, uh, that can be operating it even in us now today, hallelujah. But that stiff neck in the Hebrew is 7186, and it's uh, hard or cruel, severe, obstinate, hard, difficult, severe, fierce, intense, vehement, stubborn, stiff of neck, Stiff neck, rigorous of battle. Hallelujah. If we look at Exodus 32, Exodus chapter 32, I'm going to start at verse 1 and I'm going to go down to 10. And it says, And when the people saw that Moses displayed, delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we would not what has become of him. So look how they're speaking about Moses. This is the man that, you know, pretty much put his life on the line for y'all. This, this is the man that brought y'all out. And you see how you speak against him? You, you, you know, it's evident that man is going to serve something or is going to worship something. Is that not right? And we look at verse 2 and it says, And Aaron said unto them, Break out, break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives. 
of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graven tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, these be the gods or the mighty ones, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Now, that's blasphemy right there. I mean, that that is something else, right? No respect, no regard for the creator and what he had just done for them. None whatsoever. So it's evident man is going to worship something. And it says here in uh, verse five, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said to say tomorrow is a feast to Yahweh. That's no good. Saints of the Most High. Yah. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And Yahweh said unto Moses, go get thee down for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. You hear that? They have corrupted themselves. When they thought it was a fun thing, a thing, you know, to be merry and, and to joke and to play, and they took it lightly, what Yah had just done for them, and turned so quickly unto other mighty ones. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And verse 9 says, And Yahweh said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation. So this didn't please Yahweh at all. Matter of fact, he was upset about it. And we can see many times in which Yahweh's anger, it was just kindled against the people. He was just upset with them, ready to do away with them. Many times, you know, it was quenched and, you know, somebody interceded for them and he got another chance. But many times they suffered wrath. A lot of people died. Hallelujah. We need to take note of that, Israel. This is no playing thing. This is nothing um, a, a laughing matter, as they thought it was. It, they thought it was a, a all a game. <clears throat> but Yahweh was serious. Well, I'm going to go from there to Deuteronomy. How do I sound, y'all? Is it all right? I hear a little bit of a ringing going on. Y'all don't hear that? All right. Deuteronomy 10, um, starting at verse 12. And it says, And now Israel... What doeth Yahweh thy Elohim require of thee? But to fear Yahweh thy Elohim, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So that's what's required of us, Israel. Hallelujah. Though it may seem like a lot, it's really not a lot. Israel, because if we look at the rewards of it, the benefits of serving Yahweh, they, they, you know what I mean? They fall outweigh any negative thoughts or anything that we can think of that that is too hard as we all, you know, think and as we've been taught. But we know that the way of the transgressors is hard. Hallelujah. So there's nothing wrong with giving our all. And that's the thing we, we, we are learning. Even the more so now in this day and hour, we're learning how to give more of ourselves. We're learning how to give our all. You know, it just blows my mind when I think about it. You look at all the stuff that pastor does, you know, from the Sabbath message to the scripture study to the videos all throughout the day, dealing with the work that goes on on the community, dealing with counseling and, and, and giving out wisdom to, you know, the heads of the communities, all the different things that he does. I mean, this man is given over to it. As he said, he's addicted to the ministry. He's addicted to Yah. You know what I'm saying? And we, we see this example before us, but me being, you know, being before you come in here, uh, this what the second uh, scripture study, you know, and uh, Shabbat message that I did is just showing me even with all the other stuff that I have to do, how much it requires. It requires a lot, you know, and you have to really give over yourself to this. So it's not a small thing. But just to see him do all that, I'm just wondering how in the world 
It's got to be by the strength of Yah that he's able to do all these things. But if he's giving his all, we should be able to give our all as well in whatever capacity that we're in. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. But that's what Yah requires of us. Hallelujah. In verse 13 of Deuteronomy 10 says, To keep the commandments of Yahweh and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is Yahweh, is Yahweh's, thy Elohim. The earth also with all that therein is. Only Yahweh had a delight in thy fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them, even you, above all people, as it is this day. Hallelujah. And listen to verse 16 says, circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff necked. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 16 and 30 says, how weak is thine heart? Said Yahweh, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious, whorish woman. And the scriptures version said the, um, the deeds of a shameless whore. And if you've been reading Ezekiel uh, chapter 16, you see how Yahweh, you know, describes us as straight up. We were whores, straight up, whorish women, shameless. Uh, is that right, Israel? And we don't want to be viewed in that light, hallelujah, to our Yah, not at all. But the main focus, saints, of this, this study this evening, briefly here, is, is to mainly center around circumcision of the heart, to cutting off and ridding and, and, and to separate ourselves from unclean things, you know, of this world and become totally consecrated unto Yah. You know, as we look at these, these uh, behaviors and... Uh, which are really fueled by the spirits. It's all about the condition, saints, of our heart. Many still possess that loose, uh, un, uncurtailed or um, skin, that nat uh, nature of the past life, which causes us to sin against Yah. It's still embedded in our hearts, and it causes us to not fully give ourselves unto Yah and not to trust him, not to obey him and not to submit unto him. But as we look at it, the heart, and we deal with that, you know, pastor preaches a lot to the heart. Is that right? And a lot of attention is uh, focused on the heart, which is really the inner man. It's the in close relationship with the mind and the will and also our comprehension. You know, it is related to our thinking, to our knowledge, reflection, and our memory. Hallelujah. So no wonder the king, King David, he said that he would hide the word of Yahweh in his heart. Hallelujah. That he may not sin against Yah. But if we look at Deuteronomy 11 here, Deuteronomy 11, and I'm going to start at verse 13. And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently, you hear that, saints? Diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day to love Yahweh, your Elohim, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you, listen to this, the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine. And thine oil. So these are the benefits. These are the rewards of, of being diligent, diligently hearken unto the commandments of Yah. All right. And I will send grass in the fields for thy cattle that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and ye turn aside and serve other mighty ones. And worship them. And then Yahweh's wrath be kindled against you. And he shut up the heaven that there be no rain and that the land yield not her fruit unless ye perish quickly from off the good land which Yahweh giveth you. And we definitely don't want that to happen. 
But you know, another thing we see is a, a, a history of uh, our people when, all, when things were going well, things were going just fine. You know what I mean? Israel was good doing their own thing. It's not until persecution come upon us, it's not until a hardship come upon us where we want to cry out unto Yah. But, but what it looks like is that we, we need something that's going to motivate us. We need something that's going to put that fear up on us. Because when, when things are all good and how we're living in this luxurious lifestyle here, even in captivity here, we're going to need something, saints of the Most High, Yah, to keep us focused, to keep us, you know, with our, our, our attention on Yah. You know, we think about uh, this past tabernacles, and I, I won't forget the looks I saw on many's face when we had the interpretation, um, speaking in tongues and, and, and Yah speaking unto us. I remember the looks on many, many people's face, you know, and it's, it's what you call that shit face. That was a shit face. You know, people, for whatever reason, just fear was upon them, you know, just not knowing what's going on, whether they, they, they lives were not in order. Whatever the case was, you saw it. It was evident. But how long did that really last? Let's just be honest. You know what I mean? How long did that fear that last? It didn't last too long. Because you know what I mean? You can see the behavior. Not uh, shortly after how people act, you know what I mean? So we need something that's going to really keep that in our minds. Hey, you know what? This is serious. Something that's going to cause our knees to knock. Something that's going to make us really, really fear. Glory to the king. Moving on, saints. Um, Second Chronicles here, 30. Start at 8. Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 8. Now be, be ye not stiff-necked. As your fathers were. But yield yourselves unto Yahweh and enter into his sanctuary, which he had sanctified forever, and serve Yahweh, your Elohim, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. For if you turn again unto Yahweh, your brethren and your children shall find compassion. Before them that lead them captive, so that they shall come again into this land. For Yahweh your Elohim is gracious and merciful, and will not turn away his face from you if you turn unto him. Hallelujah. And that's the, the biggest thing in this hour for us to really turn unto him and stay that way, stay focused, stay diligent. Hallelujah. Keep reading how um, the fierceness and the wrath of Yahweh will come upon us. That's only warnings. Hallelujah. That's only warnings for us, saints, to continue to, uh, to be obedient servants. Hebrews 3, chapter 3, starting at verse 7. And it says, Wherefore, as the Holy Spirit said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart. You hear that, huh? In their heart. And they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living Yahweh. Glory to the king. And we know the, the outcome of that. We already know that. But another word that, that can be described when, when, when talking about that stiff neck, and we read it, I read it here, is stubbornness. All right. Stubborn is one word that defines a stiff neck individual. And we all know that stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. All right. Another word that defines a stiff necked person is rebellion. And if we look at Nelson's expository dictionary, of the Old Testament, it defines the word rebellion or rebellious by the following phrases. And it says, be contentious, make angry, contend with, dispute with, stubborn headed, opposition to someone. Motivated by pride, stubborn and rebellious speech and actions, which are against Yah. Rebellious attitude, disobedient, act of defying the commands of Yah, rebellious and defiled, 
listens to no voice, expects no correction, um, excuse me, accepts no correction, make bitter, provoke, reject, and not recognize. Also, it's rebellious and stiff-necked, all right? Let's look at a few of these uh, phrases. Uh, first one I look at it, it said contend with, and that's just a contentious spirit. I mean, how many of you ever known someone like that who always just, I mean, nothing is ever right. Always got to come back with something or, or dispute an issue and just never satisfied. Just contentious is always want to want to want to put up a fight. Another one that I read just now was motivated by pride. And the one thing I'm, I'm learning is that y'all can't stand a prideful person, a prideful spirit at all. Is that right? Yes, sir. But he rather deals with those who are humble, who, are, who abase themselves. He cannot stand pride. I'm going to go uh, to the Apocrypha in uh, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10 and 7. And it says, pride is hateful before Yah and man, and by both doeth one commit iniquity. In that same chapter, I'm going to skip down to verse 13 of Ecclesiasticus 10. Verse 13 says, for pride is the beginning of sin. You hear that, right? And he that had it shall pour out abomination. And therefore, Yahweh brought up them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. Yahweh had cast down the thrones. Of, pri of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. So he always, always despised that prideful spirit. But he upholds the meek. Hallelujah. And we should be striving even more so to be meek in spirit. Hallelujah. And I watch what goes on around here, how Yah does things. And um, it causes us to be meek. You know, I, I always reflect on Elder Bill when he... Uh, he called me once. We may have been here, been here um, on the land. And he was just telling me how, you know what? I just admire how all these young people here, they have so much knowledge and this and that. And I, I feel like I can't offer them nothing. But I had to tell him, I said, now nah, you have a lot you can offer us through experience, through, through your age and your years, you know? And I see those come up uh, after me, younger than me, with more experience, more knowledge, you know? It keeps us uh, humbled and it keeps us abased. You know, and I've been watching that over the years. So that's a good place to be. Hallelujah. You don't need us to be prideful. And you notice what happens with a lot of these folk that come here with these prideful, prideful spirits. Many of them are not even here anymore because as it says knowledge puff it up. Is that right? And they are gone away, uh, taken away because of the pride. They're prideful spirits. Hallelujah. And them refusing to humble themselves or abase themselves. But y'all hate that. All right. But it said motivated by pride. All right. This is another attribute, another characteristic of the, uh, the stiff necked spirit, this stout hearted, this, this rebellious uh, 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 nature. Hallelujah. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll do uh, verse 14. I'm still in Sirach, chapter 10, verse 14. It says Yahweh had cast down the thrones of the proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. Yahweh had plucked up the roots of the proud nations and planted the lowly in their place. Yahweh overthrew countries of the heathen and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. He took some of them away and destroyed them and had made their memorial to cease from the earth. Pride was not made for men, nor Furious anger for them that are born of a woman. Hallelujah. Verse 19 says, they that fear Yahweh are a sure seed and they that love him an honorable plant. They that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. They that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed seed. Hallelujah. Another one here that I read and it stood out is defiance to Yah's commands. All right. And that's nothing other than resistance or non-compliance. All right. To Yah's laws. Hallelujah. To his commands. 
and even to his men that are set up before you, his leaders, leaders in Israel. Hallelujah. And you know what this reminds me of when I think of just that nature that, that just in us. As a little, uh, a little child, I remember one time when my mom was trying to teach me how to write my name and how to spell my name correctly. She wrote it out for me. And so she said, okay, now follow that. In my mind, I saw what she did and I knew that was right, all right? But what I wanted to do was write it. My name is D-O-N-N-Y. So what I wanted to do was write D-N-N-O-Y. And I'm thinking, nothing wrong with it. But I, when I got that swift pop, then I realized, she's like, do it the way I showed you. In my mind, I'm thinking, but these, these are still the same letters. It still mean the same thing, right? That's how many of us are, you know what I mean? The law is already written, saints. I mean, ain't no changing it. Now, you can go around it and try to, you know, maneuver it. And that's not the way it goes. We need to be obedient. We need to comply. Hallelujah. Not being, res not resisting. All right. Yah's commands. I mean, he knows exactly what he's doing. Hallelujah. He sets men up before you. Hallelujah. Who are able, who are capable of leading you. All right. Glory to the king. Another thing is this. Um. It said, listens to no voice. When you consider the way, as I mentioned earlier, the way pastor, he preaches and he speaks. All right. He's pretty much crying out and he's sparing not. But it's for your own good. And he's lifting up his voice like a trumpet to show us, saints. He's showing us our transgressions. All right. And even the other pastors in Israel, the elders and teachers. And even the heads of the assemblies, how, what they're doing, it's all for your edification. But it's a sad thing when you would take, you won't listen to nobody's voice. You won't take no uh, correction, no rebuke, no instructions. It's a sad thing for you. And that's just that rebellious spirit. That's just that stiff neck spirit. But we better take a good look, saints, at ourselves and break any bonds or any bands or anything that has us bound in this area. And another one was that I read, it says it accepts no correction. And we all know what type of person this is. You, you, you don't accept any correction, no reproof, then you know who you are. Proverbs 13 and 1 says, a wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. You hear that? A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner Hear it, not rebuke. Proverbs 15 and 12 says, A scorner love it not one that reproveth him. Neither will he go unto the wise. All right? So he won't even seek any wise counsel. He won't receive anything. Rebellion can also be defined as revolt, overthrow, mutiny, break up, destruction, um, convulsion, resistance, interference, friction, and to withstand, all right? A, a good example of that I saw was with, with Stefan. We're all familiar with Stefan, is that right? And what happened with him. And he became a disciple uh, after Christ, after the time of Christ. But the book tells us that he was a, a wise man. Uh, he was full of faith and power. Um, and he did great wonders and miracles among the people. But you know what? There arose a sect of people, you know what I mean, who they were not able to resist the wisdom that he had, all right, and the spirit by which he spake. So they stirred up the people uh, against him. And they claimed that he was speaking blasphemous words against Jerusalem and against the law, all right? But we know that's not the truth. But what we're looking at is a certain nature of people. And, and a char characteristic. And you all know the account, but focusing on, like I said, the behavior. Be very careful that you have no offenses in you, because many who left display some of the same traits, some of the same characteristics, hallelujah, and the same behavior. They realized that they could go no further with Yah, so they spewed out, their, out, of, their, out of their heart this wickedness toward Yah, but they did it to um, his followers. They did it to the man of Yah. And this is what struck a nerve 
let's look at it in Acts here, Acts chapter 7. And I'm going to just skip a lot of it because basically what was going on, he just explained to them from the beginning. No, that's not what I'm doing. All right. And he broke it down to him. But the thing that really struck a nerve in him is this. In, in Acts chapter 7, 51, it says, ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So do you. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. And listen to this. Verse 54 says, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. So it went deep. It really affected them. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he being full of the Holy Spirit, he looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of Yahweh and Jesus standing on the right hand of Yahweh and said, behold, I see heavens open. I see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of Yah. Verse 57 says, they, then they cried out with a loud voice. And listen to this. They stopped their ears and they ran unto him with one accord and they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet. Whose name was Saul and they stoned Stephen, calling upon Yah and saying, Master Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice. And he said, Master, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So these are some rootless, rootless people. He said they shut up their ears. They didn't want to hear it anymore. And that's what many are doing this day. They do not want to hear. They do not want to hear when it's pricking their heart. All right. Moving on, Matthew 13 here. Matthew 13, I'm going to start at 10. And this is an account of Yeshua here, the Messiah. You see, the disciples were wondering, you know, why do you speak the way you speak when you're dealing with the multitudes? Why do you speak to them like that? And you basically told them, well, you know, I speak to them in parables because you know what? It's not for them to understand. But uh, Matthew 13 and 10, it says, and the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even hath, therefore, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see and see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of his eyes, which say it, by hearing ye shall, ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. And as I said to you last week, I said, you know what, we are fortunate. You are very fortunate, those of us who can really hear this word. You know, I had, when I was back in Louisiana, a guy called me, and he was you know, listening to a uh, pastor, but he told me, he said, you know, I'll be honest with you, I just cannot, I can't get it. I don't understand it. I can't comprehend it, you know? And I began to tell him, I tried to work with him to, you know, to, to help him out and tell him, you know, just take your time with it, you know? Go back in the archives and, and just try and then work your way up. And then what he decided to do was go somewhere else. He said, you know what, I'll just go to another camp. You know, I'll just go over there. Fine. But you, Israel, you can hear the word being proclaimed unto you. You can hear it clearly. All right? You're very fortunate in this hour. And take clear advantage of it. All right? You know, don't be, you know, fighting against it. Because all you're doing is fighting against Yah. Hallelujah. And so be thankful that your ears 
Your ears are open. Your eyes can see. Hallelujah. Verse 15 says, for this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart. You see, is keep going back to the heart. You hear that? The heart, the heart, the heart. And should be converted and I shall heal them. Hallelujah. But it's not given unto them, Israel. And that's just the truth. It's not given unto them. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. All right. Sarah, Ecclesiastes again. We'll go back there. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Hallelujah. Y'all all right, Israel? Praise y'all. Hallelujah. I ain't going to be here before you too much longer. Israel, just, uh, just wanted to just read a few things to you and talk about different behaviors. And just hopefully that they're not operating in you. And if it is, I mean, let's just be real. All right? We hear uh, new truths coming forth. We hear new revelations. Sometimes it can be difficult. But we got to do whatever we need to do, hallelujah, in order to overcome that and be obedient and in, uh, with Yah. Is that right? Yes, sir. Glory to the king. So rock 16, starting at verse 6, it says, In the congregation of the ungodly shall a fire be kindled, and in a rebellious nation wrath is set on fire. He was not pacified toward the old giants who fell away in the strength of their foolishness. Neither spared he the place where Lot sojourned, but abhorred them for their pride. He pitied not the people of perdition. Who were taken away in their sins, nor the 600,000 footmen who were gathered together in the hardness of their hearts. And if there be one stiff neck among the people, it is marvel, it is marvel if he escape on punishment. For mercy and wrath are with him. He is mighty to forgive and to pour out displeasure. As his mercy is great, so is his correction also. He judges a man according to his works. All right, Ecclesiastes 10, start at verse 20 here. Among brethren, he that is chief is honorable. So are, so are they that fear Yahweh in his eyes. The fear of Yahweh goeth before the obtaining of authority, but roughness and pride is the loosing thereof. Whether he be rich, noble, or poor, their glory is the fear of Yahweh. It is not meet to despise the poor man that had understanding, neither is it convenient to magnify a sinful man. Great men and judges and potentates shall be honored. Yet is there none of them greater than he that feareth Yahweh. Unto the servant that is wise shall they that are free do service. And he that had knowledge will not grudge when he is reformed. Hallelujah. All right, Isaiah here, Isaiah 48, start at verse 1. It says, Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which ye are called by the name of Israel, and are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which spare by the name of Yahweh, and make mention of Yahweh, of Israel, the Elohim of Israel, but not in truth nor in righteousness, for they call themselves of the holy city and stay themselves upon the Elohim of Israel. The master of hosts is his name. I have declared the former things from the beginning. And they went forth out of my mouth. And I showed them. I did them suddenly. And they and they came to pass. But I knew that thou art obstinate. And thy neck is an iron sinew, and thy brow brass. I have even from the beginning 
declared it to thee. Before it came to pass, I showed it to thee. Lest thou shouldest say, mine idol had done them. And my graven image and my molten image had commanded them. Thou hast heard, see all this, and will not ye declare it. I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou didst not know them. They are created now, and not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heardest them not, lest thou shouldest say, Behold, I knew them. Yea, thou, heart it, thou hearest not, yea, thou knowest not. Yea, from that time that thine ear was not opened, for I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously and was called a transgressor from the womb. For my name's sake will I de defer mine anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction for my own sake. For my own sake will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. Mine hand also had laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand had spanned the heavens. When I, had, when I called unto them, they stand, they stand up together. All ye, assemble yourselves and hear, which among them had declared these things. The master had loved him. He will do his pleasure on Babylon, and his arms shall be on the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken. Yea, I have called him, I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come ye near unto me. Hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there am I. And now the master, the Elohim, and his spirit has sent me. Thus said Yahweh, thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel. I am the master, thy Elohim, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Thy seed also had been as the sand and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Hallelujah. So, so Israel, this is really for us to take heed to. Um, like I said earlier, not make the same mistakes, hallelujah, and to not be a people, a stiff-necked people, just an obstinate people, people who will re re uh, receive no correction, who will not hear any, anyone's voice. Um, but just take heed, hallelujah. Um, this is a, a wonderful time we're living in, yet it's, it's a hectic and chaotic time that we're living in, and we see how the days are just flying by us. So our objective, our goal is to take advantage of every hour that we get, every time that we get, hallelujah, to spend time with the Father, to search our hearts, search our minds, and anything, uh, saints of the Most High, that's not clean, that, uh, that access, remove that from the foreskin of your hearts, hallelujah. So Israel, that's all I got this evening. That was a little short study, but bless y'all. Hope something read or said was just to uh, encourage you throughout the week. But uh, bless y'all, and shalom, shalom, saints. Hallelujah.
look at them looking.